guiding your teen into college, career, and academics, it's so challenging, but it's so important. Now, I firmly believe the college choice should be tied to a career. I combine these into one larger bundle consideration. Of course, each family has their own perspective on this and the money versus happiness or following your heart versus providing for your family. Of course, there could be moral or religious practices that dictate some of these decisions. If gender plays a role in your family or political position, does this matter to you? It might. It might influence the career choices or the opportunities that you see available for your kids. Now, let's be frank. You have expectations, right? If you believe in your heart that your daughter's primary adult responsibility is to be a wife, mother, maybe even a homeschool mother, then getting her ready for medical school is a bad plan. She's going to invest 12 years into that education. Student loan debt may be exceeding two hundred and seventy to $300,000. She isn't going to be able to simply put that on hold to raise her family. Logically, she's going to feel compelled to do this work that she's trained so hard for, and financially and even morally, she'll be obligated to repay this debt. So this brings a great burden into her family if she can't do that. Now, every situation is delicate, but these are concerns that you can address sooner rather than later, because later, things get more complicated. Now consider also, your teen may want to earn a degree in an obscure field or something worse, something that is a dying field with very little opportunity. I'm sure each of us can think of at least five different careers from our childhood that aren't careers today. The fact remains, not all degrees and not all careers are equal, even though they, they charge the same tuition price. Encouraging your teen to pursue a career field that's on a downward trend is really creating a future of job insecurity and a need for constant retraining. So there's really no right or wrong paths, but exploring how their career choice maps is really one of the things that you should do inside the context of your own family. Have these conversations about gender roles. Have these conversations about sacrifice of the different professions. And also have these discussions about financial rewards. All of these can begin in childhood. You have earned the privilege of being your teen's college and career counselor. So this is not the time to push your family values out the window in the name of a college education. This is the time to speak up. You can start as early as middle school and you can begin conversations about your teen with their future aspirations. Many excellent resources exist to help you guide your child, but don't use this time to zero in on a specific job. Rather, begin helping them recognize their talents, their strengths, their weaknesses, and the ways that they can help others or make a contribution to the world. I think most of us agree that having a purpose or using our talents is very enjoyable. One other example. If your son has, or your daughter, has a strong entrepreneurial spirit, you can encourage them to follow through on that. Ideas like starting a small business, it could be something like lawn mowing. They're going to get a feel for that accomplishment that comes from working for themselves. Of course, the point here is not actually to grow a lawn company or to make a huge profit or to take on some endeavor that's going to last forever. It's the act of starting that business and working for themselves that allows that entrepreneurial spirit to be fed and to grow. Now, this wasn't on purpose, but my husband and I always allowed our kids and allowed them to pursue their entrepreneurial interests. All four of our sons had small businesses from a very early age. One of my sons owned a gumball business, gumball machine business, rather, for eight years. Just working about one hour a month, really, He managed to save enough money over those eight years. He purchased two very expensive gaming computers, and he had about $1,000 in the bank when he hit 10th grade and would become old enough to actually get a real job. So this life experience that he gained was priceless. As we talk about careers, 
we have to talk about the academics. Academically, the middle school years and early high school years are when a lot of teens fall apart. Lacking a foundation in math or reading will be a disaster for your high school student. Now the subject matter will get more complicated, but you can use your middle school years and your early high school years to fill in any gaps. This could mean going backwards in math or even changing your curriculum approach. Remember that 100% understanding of arithmetic will be more useful to them than a vague understanding or a fear of algebra. If your teen's prospective career will require excellent grades in certain subjects, you'll have the opportunity to think all of that through in the safety net of your home, long before you have to pay tuition. A lot of people want their kids to be engineers, but let's not get too excited until they've conquered Calculus One, especially if they don't love math. Your teen doesn't have to be academically advanced in order to earn college credit, but they should be solidly capable of quote-unquote doing school when they have the appropriate support and resources. So for instance, if your teen struggles with learning, just keep working, keep working with them, keep moving forward. The son that I talked about in my introduction in the earlier episode, the one who finished his associate's degree in welding at the same time that he earned his high school diploma, he didn't read until he was 10. I worked very, very hard to work out a path for him where he would be a winner. So instead of fretting over all of the things that he didn't do well, instead, I poured fuel on everything that he was great at. Academics are only going to be part of the puzzle. Your student doesn't have to be brilliant. If there are gaps, you can fill them. If there are challenges, keep working on them. Accept and find the ways that your child can be successful. Someone once gave me great advice, and that was to know who my son wasn't and plan accordingly. I love that advice because we all know who we want our teens to be, but sometimes it's hard to recognize who they aren't. That advice has served me well. I remember giving a lecture at the community college to a group of prospective culinary students. One of the girls was in front and was barely listening to me until I started talking about money. I explained that everyone in the room wanted to become chefs, but to remember that most restaurants only have one chef, so the majority of your career will be spent as a cook, vying for those promotions to become a chef. I explained that a chef's salary was fair, but for the many, many years that you have to work before becoming a chef, your salary won't be much. Even college-trained chefs, or I should say wannabe chefs, might only make a few dollars over minimum wage for many, many years while they're paying their dues. But this student was so excited, she nearly jumped out of her seat and she let out a shout. Everyone was laughing. I was so confused. I didn't understand what she was excited about. And she responded that she was earning minimum wage and had been for many years. So the thought of her getting a dollar or more an hour was great news to her. Now, I tried to explain to her that a dollar or more an hour over minimum wage might feel like a lot of money when you're 18, but it would be hard to raise a family on that wage or, you know, to do other things. But in other words, nobody is getting excited about making cook's wages, okay? But the point of my lecture was to help the students understand why they should separate themselves from the millions of other cooks and develop their value and rise to the position of chef. But she missed that point because she was caught up in the extra dollar or two that she would be making that year. Now I tell this story because it shows how a teen doesn't have context. They don't understand the context of salary in terms of their future college and career and how they're going to support themselves. They don't really understand the differences between careers that require say 60 hours a week or those that require being always on call, perhaps some jobs require extensive traveling or any of these other aspects that are really part of, of professions and that are non-negotiable. So a teen doesn't always value the importance of having things like health insurance or holidays off or vacation time. So these quality of life issues are very, very important and they're very real. They're something that you can talk about with your teen and you should talk about them. Fortunately, what our teens do have 
is they have experience observing our lifestyles in our home. So use your own family's lifestyle to help them under, understand what is part of the expectation and what it means to be grown up. Now, one of the aspects that I'm very direct with my teens about is salary. Um, I'm not going to say salary is everything, of course not, but let's remember that if you have a teen who hasn't earned money, hasn't saved money, hasn't spent money, they really have no concept of money. Eventually, you will want your teen to be able to support himself or herself. And so the fact is, when your teen gets their first paycheck, they're going to feel like a millionaire. So this is not enough training for them to be able to understand the bigger picture. When my kids were young, I used a measure that I thought they could easily understand. And what they understood was our lifestyle. So we own a home and we have a car. We take an occasional weekend vacation here and there. But I also shop at thrift stores. I grow vegetables. I clip coupons. And so they know the limits of our budget inside of our family to some extent because they live at home and they live a certain lifestyle. So the way that I would relay this to my children when they would ask about a job is I would say, that job pays half of your dad's paycheck, or that job pays 10 of your dad's paychecks. So that phrase removed the need for me to explain to them dollar amounts, and it just let them think about what that meant in terms of lifestyle. As they grew older, I was much more frank. And so by the time my kids were teens, we were all you know, very transparent, they, but they were also experienced money earners at that time. And they were experienced money spenders. We always let our kids spend their money and save their money um, in their own way. So we included conversations about numbers all the time. So if I'm talking to a teen who doesn't have any experience as a money earner or who hasn't been allowed to spend their money, I never use numbers because they have no context. So suppose that your teen's prospective career is going to require him to live below your family's current standard of living. Now, in that case, that's a valuable point and it shouldn't be overlooked. As your teen's guidance counselor, you should guide them. If you should counsel them, if not you, then who? As your teen moves through high school, you can begin aligning them with the opportunities to meet real people in careers. I am a huge fan of this approach and I consider this a living career fair. It's all around you. Start with the people who know you. Start with the people who would happily chat with your teen. Look to your friends, neighbors, family, homeschool colleagues, church members, or other adults in your community. By sending your teen to meet with these individuals in their place of work, which of course you want them dressed appropriately, they will experience a wide variety of situations that they might find interesting, or they might find that they don't like. You can later expand on this idea into a more formalized approach by having them reach out to strangers, but start with your inner circle first. You'll probably find a lot of good people that they can talk to. Now, better than meeting someone is experience. And I love this experience is so valuable and it takes away the fantasy. What's the fantasy? Well, most of us imagine what a career is like. We base it on TV or the media, but trust me when I tell you, you do not want your teen learning what a job is for their very first time after you've paid for four years of college. I'll use an example. As a culinary instructor, I sometimes had students who enrolled in our program before they ever worked in a restaurant. How could you know that you wanted to be a chef when you might not have ever even met one? You've never worked in a kitchen. As you'll learn, I use a lot of restaurant stories in my, in my examples, but if you watch and imagine what it is like to work in a restaurant based on TV or Instagram or on a reel, you're not going to have any clue. Busy restaurants are stressful. They're loud. They're dangerous. The communication style in a kitchen is uh, unforgiving, let's say. So before I'm paying culinary school tuition for my teen, you can bet he's spending every weekend washing dishes and peeling potatoes for about 500 covers a night. That's how we're making sure that it's a fit before we get in there and we start paying tuition. So when possible, and it's almost always possible, help your teen arrange job shadows or stages in a professional setting. If you're in a situation where your teen is either too young or the company legally won't allow your teen to do a job shadow, ask instead if they'll do a tour. They almost always say yes.